So before this video again starts, I just want to make a quick announcement that I make music now. I have a music channel now, so if you want to go check that out and support me, the link will be in the description below. I also put out my Fruititor Arrow album, which I am very, very proud of, so it will mean the world to me if you go check that out as well. Now, on to the video. So, Fruititor Arrow. The aesthetic that quickly took over YouTube and pretty much anywhere else. With a lot of music being put into playlists, as well as finding old commercials and interior designs that replicate the aesthetic. The future that we were promised is something that you see often in these videos. Which just means that Fruititor Arrow was the aesthetic that we all thought the future would look like as little kids. A lot of commercials back then also featured a lot of this aesthetic as well. Things were really seemed to be optimistic for the future. But that's until we grow up and realize that the world's not too promising as we thought it would. But also, Fruititor Arrow can be also seen at the dentist. Or even going to the doctor as a young child. Fruititor Arrow has definitely been a part of our lives, whether we realize it or not. Today, there are multiple compilations, playlists, featuring and dedicating this to the Fruititor Arrow style that they once saw as kids. And while looking up things related to Fruititor Arrow, I came across this video. The title did certainly set me back a little bit, as it's titled Gen Z's Make Believe Nostalgia. With also the inclusion of This Isn't A Thing. When watching this video, I saw this comment pretty much summarizing the entire video. But we're not gonna stop there. The video opens up with him mentioning a lot of nostalgic things that millennials seem to remember. While mentioning shows that have been rebooted, he mentions that people have invented the music called Barber Beats and Clown Wave. Which Barber Beats makes you just feel like you got a haircut back in the 90s. And with Clown Wave making you feel how it felt going to McDonald's. He also mentions Mallsoft, which often gets confused with Barber Beats, but Mallsoft makes you feel like you're going to the mall back in the day with your parents. And here's the thing that I found strange. He says how Zoomers and Gen Z have been trying to make this aesthetic called Fruitier Arrow, just like how Vaporwave was to Millennials. And technically, Millennials were the first to do this with Vaporwave. Something called Frutiger Arrow, a thing. This is basically supposed to be the Gen Z equivalent of that late 80s, early 90s design sensibility that my generation has been having so much fun with. YouTube is currently full of all sorts of Frutiger Arrow videos from the under 30 video essay crowd, often expressing a great deal of self-satisfaction that they've stumbled onto something really important here. Finally, a nostalgic cult of Gen Z. We've taken 80s aesthetic and made them separate from each other, like Outrun, Synthwave, Chillwave, Dark Synthwave, Retrowave, and Future Funk, which really feels contradictory when he has a florist shop vinyl in the background. The problem is that 80s and 90s nostalgia has been polarized, and Vaporwave is one of them, nor it's never mentioned. Every criticism that he says can be applied to Vaporwave, but do we get complaints about Vaporwave in this video? No. He does have a video called Middle Class Millennial Nostalgic Art, which talks about liminal spaces, vaporwave, and 80s and 90s nostalgic art, which serves more as an explanation to the retro-inspired movement. Both of these videos are night and day. The same things he talks about Fruitager Arrow can still be said in his Millennial Nostalgic Art video. I can see he's passionate about vaporwave, I myself included. However, he ignores that corporate marketing teams and designers don't create designs with an embedded message. Fruitier Arrow was meant to calm people. We see it with landscapes, beaches, and the ocean. Design is visual marketing, and if it doesn't have any sort of call to action or an imagined place in which everything is perfect, people won't care. And with the recent rise of Fruitier Arrow, we can definitely see it. Its impact a decade later really shows how many of us grew up with this aesthetic. I quickly want to go back to Vaporwave and its subgenres. A simple Google search of Vaporwave subgenres, there's many, many subcategories to the aesthetic it has. The feeling of needing to categorize everything into much smaller things started with millennials, and more specifically, with the way the search algorithms function. We've grown up into an internet full of things that require keywords to search for. And while the internet is our main interface with culture, just like with how previous generations, if you heard a song you liked, you needed a very specific genre to describe it. The only way to listen to music was on the radio station or to go out and buy the music. 
And well, if you like the song, you just tune into the same radio station. Or even at a CD store for recommendations. Communities and online spaces have evolved. You'd be hard pressed to find any obscure aesthetic or visual vibe you don't know the specific keywords to. Things being chopped up into smaller things are vital to have specific keywords. It's just the norm nowadays. I personally like seeing aesthetics being their own thing. Seeing many aesthetics evolve over time and being categorized into smaller things has made it so much easier to find certain aesthetics that we didn't really know the names of many years ago. I think it's unfair for a generation which was mostly raised by the internet to then use the internet like this. I can understand someone not understanding or misunderstanding something, especially when it comes to things you didn't grow up with. And I'm saying this in general, rather than just in aesthetics. I'm not even going to bother explaining what the name Frutiger Arrow even means, because the mere fact that the name even requires an explanation is an acknowledgement of its failure, in my opinion. But basically, Frutiger Arrow is a term that somebody came up with to describe this sort of aesthetic. This is the introductory photo to the concept that they almost always use, in fact. The idea is that we are describing a visual style that is supposed to combine natural things, like water and fish, with high-tech things to create a bright and pleasant vibe, along with certain other design flourishes, like lots of gradients and turquoise-colored things. The problem arises, however, in that some of the Zoomer thought leaders are trying to broaden the definition of Frutiger Arrow to encompass basically everything that defined material culture in the 2000s and early 2010s, which, like I said, then just invites other Zoomers to argue endlessly about whether, say, Super Monkey Ball 2 is actually Frutiger Arrow as opposed to Y2K or Cyber Paradisism or Pool Core or any of the other untold dozens and dozens of Pokemon-esque hyper-precise niche micro-aesthetics found on the Aesthetics Wiki. So Zoomers, I implore you, just give this up. Just say you're nostalgic about the early 21st century and leave it at that. Say you're nostalgic about the early 21st century and leave it at that. If you're nostalgic about 2000s era shopping malls, just say you're nostalgic about 2000s era shopping malls. If you're nostalgic about 2000s era computer interface menus, just say you're nostalgic about 2000s era computer interface menus. You don't have to get bogged down trying to express your sentimentality through these jargon nonsense terms that no sane person knows. You don't have to get bogged down trying to express your sentimentality through these jargon nonsense terms that no sane person knows. In my humble opinion, I think this is a way for realization that people aren't young anymore. When we look back at our lives, we tend to see things with rose-tinted glasses. Certain things will be romanticized. That just comes with nostalgia. However, we must realize that this isn't an accurate depiction of what that certain era looked like. And that's okay, at the end of the day, these aesthetics aren't really hurting anyone. And eventually, other generations would have something nostalgic to look back on fondly, just like how it is right now with Frutiger Arrow, and how it was back then with Vaporwave. And with that, I hope some of y'all learned more about Frutiger Arrow today, and a couple of other aesthetics as well. There will be a future video covering more on aesthetics, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see y'all in the next video.